JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 23rd. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained the most versus NZD, JPY and CAD in that order, while it decked out the least gains versus CHF. The strengthening of the green bag and the weakening of the risk-linked Kiwi suggest that the financial community may have traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the yen points otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major European indices were mixed, with some of them recovering a portion of uh, last week's uh, late losses due to announcements uh, for fresh lockdowns around the block in order to fight the fourth wave of the pandemic. The main gainers were uh, telecommunications, gaining following the announcement uh, that uh, the US fund KKR is interested in buying Telecom Italia, which suggests that investors uh, bet on uh, the possibility of similar corporate movements uh, elsewhere. Now, later in the day, though, sentiment was dented after, uh, after US President Joe Biden picked Jerome Powell to lead uh, the Federal uh, Reserve Bank for a second term. Given that the other uh, potential candidate was Fed Governor Lael Brainard, who is seen as who is seen by many as more dovish than Powell on monetary policy, Powell's nomination reinforced expectations that the Fed could push the hike button in the middle of uh, next year and perhaps once more by the end of it. Brainard was, appo was appointed as uh, as vice chair, and surprisingly, in her aftermath remarks, uh, appeared also committed uh, to getting to, to getting inflation down. Maybe that added extra fuel to the short uh, selling in Wall Street, especially in Nasdaq, which mainly constitutes of high growth tech stocks. Let's not forget that expectations over higher interest rates also mean. Uh, also mean lower present values for uh, such companies. Anyhow, a Dove as, uh, as a vice chair could still raise questions as to whether they could, uh, they could uh, push the hike button as soon as next summer, but her comments imply that there are maybe more members supporting uh, such an action than initially thought. Ahead of, uh, of Biden's announcement, the Fed fund futures were pointing uh, to the first uh, post-pandemic hike to be delivered in July, but now they point to June. In our view, all this uh, means that uh, the US dollar could continue sailing north, but what about equities? Yes, we could see some more declines on expectations of faster rate hikes, but in our view, investors may have already digested the idea of higher rates soon to some extent. We believe that they are more focused on indications and proofs as to how the US economy has been performing. And as long as everything points uh, to, re to resilience, <coughs> excuse me, and as long as they, uh, everything points, points to resilience, they may, st they may stay willing to buy again. So for now, we will class yesterday's retreat or any short term extensions of it as, uh, as a corrective move. Now, as uh, for today, the main items on the agenda may be the, pre the preliminary PMIs for November from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Getting the ball rolling uh, with the Eurozone, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have uh, continued sliding, resulting in the fourth consecutive slide to the composite index. Specifically, the composite index is anticipated to have slid to 53.1 from 54.2. 
This will add to concerns that the latest supply shortages and bottlenecks have left their marks on the euro area economy and combined with the latest lockdown measures around the block could add more credence to the recent uh, remarks by ECB President Lagarde that tightening monetary policy now uh, to rein in inflation could choke off the eurozone's recovery. Thus, with all that in mind, we believe that sliding PMIs could prompt euro traders to push further back their uh, bets on a potential uh, rate hike by ECB next year and thereby keep the euro under selling pressure. Now moving to the UK, both the manufacturing and services indices are forecast uh, to are forecast to have declined here as well, with uh, the composite index expected to fall to 54.1 from 57.8. At its latest meeting, the Bank of England decided not to hike, despite market participants assigning an 80% chance for such a move ahead of the meeting, and instead said that this could happen in coming months. However, soon thereafter, Governor Andrew Bailey said that they are still on a path towards raising interest rates, a remark which combined with further acceleration in inflation last week encouraged investors to place bets over a December hike. According to the UK overnight uh, index uh, swaps uh, forwards uh, yield curve, such a move is nearly fully priced in, and uh, for that to change, uh, uh, excuse me, it's nearly fully priced in, but a disappointment in the PMIs uh, may, raise, uh, may raise questions on the matter and perhaps result in a pullback in the British pound. Now, flying to the US, in contrast to the Eurozone, here, both the manufacturing and services PMIs are forecast to have increased, underscoring the resilience of, um, of the US economy and perhaps adding more validity to the view of over a potential rate hike by the Fed in the middle of next year. Now, tonight, uh, during the early Asian morning, we have a central bank deciding on interest rates, and this is the RBNZ. Back in October, this bank raised interest rates by 25 basis points as was widely expected, noting that further removal of monetary policy stimulus is expected over time. Now, with the New Zealand CPI surging to 4.9% in the third quarter and the unemployment rate hitting a record low during the same quarter, market participants are almost certain that, no that officials will hit the hike button again this week. The main question, though, is whether they will add 25 or 50 basis points. According to market chatter, there is around a 40% chance for a double hike. In our view, despite the domestic economy performing very well, there are uh, other major economies still facing problems, one of which is China, New Zealand's biggest trading partner. Thus, we believe that there is no, there is no reason for RBNZ policymakers to rush into delivering more than a 25 basis points increase. This could disappoint those expecting more and may result in a pullback in, uh, in the Kiwi at the time of the announcement. However, conditional upon the bank staying willing to continue normalizing its policy, the retreat may stay, short, may stay limited and short-lived. After all, the RBNZ will be the only major central bank raising interest rates uh, post-pandemic not once but twice. Now, as for the rest of today's events, besides uh, the PMIs, the only other release worth mentioning is the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for, uh, for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. We also have three speakers on the agenda, and those are ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos, Bank of England MPC member Jonathan Haskell, and Bank of Canada Deputy Governor Paul uh, Bodry. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.